this is your flange. That's no good. That's where all the exhaust is coming from. You can see it move there. Flange is rotted. The bolts are rotted. The whole exhaust manifold has to come out for this to happen. But unfortunately, this flange is no good. So unless I can find what they call a quickie flange, which there's not a lot of room to put it in, this side is bad as well. But it's intact. You know, it almost looks like the bolts are, you know, maybe removable, but I don't think I'm going to even bother. Ugh. Um, yeah, this is a hell of a job. And see, that's the starter right there. That's why it's leaking on the starter. Still don't know why it didn't start. I haven't tried it yet. I, I tried to turn the key. It still didn't work. So I got to test the power and it's on the inside. I, I got to do other things, but I got your exhaust system, but the part, one of the parts that I made you get uh, are not right. The little guy. So I will uh, figure that out. Have you ever seen something so hideous on a car? Look at these bolts. I have to get out. Unreal. So this motor was put in, so they put a junkyard motor, they put the header pipe, and they cut it, you know, the Y pipe. They cut it so they can get the motor out on each side. As you can see, this is the original pipe over here. Okay, that those studs look a little bit better, but they put the original pipe here, and then they go to a, they go to a, um, what do you call it? An exhaust place, and they just add to it, instead of actually fixing it, or doing it while the motor was out. This is how lazy people are. Lazy how mechanics are, yeah, how lazy mechanics are. That flange is rotted as well. They had the disaster of the, all the bolts basically just snapped off. Had to take off the whole thing because I know the flange is broken, but the flange is broken, but the whole pipe broke off right here. It's supposed to be like this. This flange, three bolt flange, and then this, okay? I had to take that side down. All three of those bolts broke, or maybe one of them came out. But uh, this one here was just, it's been off for a long time. There's no cutoff point here. So basically it's supposed to be up a little bit and then up a little bit and then flanged outwards. Just like, just like that. And I don't know what to do. And then you got holes on the top here that nobody could see, you know. And I was going to save about this much of it or so because the original pipe would match up with the new pipe try to save it but this Y pipe is not available the only one that I saw that you could technically buy was for the bigger the bigger car but it's not it's going right from the, the factory the they can order it and that's about it and it's hundred and twenty five dollars but it doesn't get shipped until like May 25th so I gotta come up with something for this because this is gonna be a lot of fun plus I gotta consume myself with changing all the studs which I gotta remove the exhaust manifolds in order to do that this is impossible otherwise Big job. This is all day long. These are the bolts now because I had to get the manifolds off, but these bolts are messed up. And I'm hammering on a smaller socket. I got the shaft in the way, and it's a B in just to let you know. First of all, your, your steering box had a ton of play. There's an adjustment that I did, but this thing here, there's a rubber thing. It's called a rag joint. And this thing is destroyed. It moves way too much. And that's what was that kind of rubbery feel in your wheel. As far as starting it, I jumped the starter and the car cranks over, so it's not the it's not the starter, it's the wiring or the, the ignition switch or something like that. I don't know what you had done, but it'd be nice if you let me know uh, what they did or if you know what they did. Oh, before I get to that, one of your spark plugs broke off on this side, but you got two different brands and two different brands on this side too. And the ones that are in here, these are like ancient. These are so short. They haven't been this short in 30 years. So these are probably the original plugs that came with this engine. They look like from the 70s, early 80s. And there's so much rust on them, I couldn't even get them out. Like this one was changed. You see how it's longer than this one? This is an original one. This one has been changed and one was changed on the other side. But there's so much rust built up. It's like there's no maintenance ever done to this. So you need a set of spark plugs because I ain't going to be fighting that because you have to line that up. Yeah, I had to really remove the spark plugs. And one broke off, and on this side, I got two out, and it's stuck in my socket, and I had to beat it out, and uh, it's rough. It's a rough thing. As you can see here, all these studs here, there's almost nothing left. 
I actually got two of these out, but you see there was just a tiny, tiny bit of threads right there. This is all pretty much just rust. This one here completely snapped off. This one, I actually unscrewed one, but the flange is no good, as you can see. The rotted flange, but it's part of the pipe. And, and the other piece that I showed you where the pipe is, you know, completely cut off, that's that. And the same thing. These these are the uh, the studs. And this is, the, this is one of the things I had you buy. And that's going to replace them. These used to be exactly the same thickness as these. And I got to try to get these out. That's an all day affair. So... These are gaskets, which I'm probably not even going to use because well, gaskets leak. Oh, all right. I got big problems with this exhaust system, and I'm like, you know what? I should stop by the exhaust place and ask them what um, what the deal is, you know, if they can make me a couple of pipes. And I'm like, look, I can't find it. I go back again. I'm like, where the hell was this place? And then I'm like, wait a minute. That's where it was. I guess the car went up on fire <laughs> when when they were working on it. Well, this is a miserable day. I drilled the bolt and I got perfectly in the middle with the tool. And as you can see, I cracked the manifold trying to get it out. And there goes the piece. So yeah, the bolt's gonna come out. Yeah, doesn't even wanna come out. That's, that's just incredible. I can't get a break. Oh, well. Anyway, that's what I'm up against, and that's the only the one. Oh, boy. These things are really rusted in, and so even when you drill it out, you still have this problem. So it's like I got to drill all the way through and then figure out a way to support the bowl or weld the stud in, because right now... Uh, it fell here on the floor somewhere. Where the hell did it go? Oh my god! Story of my life. Fall straight down and it rolls away somewhere. So yeah, so I'm gonna probably have to weld it all together. What a fucking mess. Oh, this one probably won't crack. That one, maybe not. That was like the weakest one. There's less metal around here, but... Yeah, these... I, I had a feeling these were not going to come out. And of course, the one I picked, that's the one that... Picked first, that's the one that breaks, but... I'm going to keep looking for an exhaust manifold tonight. And see if anybody else has a set, because this is this is ridiculous to go through all this work. It really is. Especially when online they're $60 each, but locally, of course, they're more. But uh, this is crazy. I'm only using one hand. But I bet nobody ever thinks about this. Nice bee coming in here. Get away from me. Anyway, getting there. You can mill your own manifolds. <laughs> this is a heck of a lot of uh, elbow grease. Still got more to go. Oh man, lots of elbow grease. <laughs> so, all milled. Makes a huge difference. And all these studs, they had some, I had threaded it so there's some threads. I got them all pretty straight. I tested the uh, the heat riser and the uh, still hot the heat riser. I got a gasket to go in between there, and this will be this, and then I'll just have to weld that pipe. You know, the, the, I had the guy bend. What a mess. Ugh. I had a guy make me this pipe, and I told him to do it on both sides in case I mess this up. And I, I have another one then. And then uh, I have a solution for the other thing, but that's down the road. But uh, that'll go nicely. I just have to somehow cut that, cut that pipe.
short and then cut it short at the uh, the flange where it's damaged and then fix that this is the gasket that goes in between the thing and uh, so far so good that's one done so worst day ever that guy broke but I, I, again I can weld them in this one came out pretty good actually this one here I busted a drill bit off at the bottom there the first first step, you know, the skinniest drill bit, and I haven't been able to drill through, so now I'm... I've been using a die grinder. I've been trying to flatten that, hammering it down just to see if the, the, the drill bit will come out. But it went through pretty well until it broke. And when it broke, eh, that's what ruined it the whole day. Wonderful. This is hilarious. I finally got through, which... I guess about an hour has passed since the last video, and uh, I put in a, I, all my drill bits is, I mean, like every one is just all dead now, because I've been beating up on it, and I forced it through, and then it got stuck, and then I kept spitting it, it glowed red, and the only way to do it was to just keep making it glow red until I pulled it out. Unbelievable. These things are so hard to get out. It's incredible. Up. This is what they do when they mill, put it on a milling machine. It's like a big giant sand, um, sandpaper belt, you know, um, a belt sander. Except, you know, it does it really fast. This took, takes like over an hour. And uh, had a, there was one that I actually got out completely and it went in completely straight. Everything else, I had to pull that one out a little bit to get it to be in the right place. And this one here, the edge broke off, but it's in the right place. Some job. Nobody does this anymore. They would just replace them with new ones, you know. So I took it took all day for both of these. It is uh, five oh seven. I started at ten o'clock just for the two manifolds, just to prep them. Bought some bananas today to eat for later. I guess I didn't crack the window open. <laughs> it's a fucking brand new banana. <laughs> so this is the steering shaft. It may look familiar in the car. And this is the new rubber that's in between here. I know it looks like it's moved around, but that's just the way it all ends up getting crunched together. And these are special bolts. They're very heavy duty. And basically they have a wider part of the bolt here to get through the hole and then the nut on the end where it was riveted before. And this is part of the rivet I dr drilled out. And this is what it came with. And it's something where you put it in, you bolted it on, and then you cut this off. And I'm not quite sure what that was for, but it's possible that there was something to do with this in the old, um, the old cars. I, I, I don't know, but it's basically the same piece of rubber. You know, but, uh, let's see. I've been doing so much bench work between the, um, the manifolds and this. What the hell did I do with it? Yeah, this, this thing. It's very flimsy in comparison to the other one. The other one is rock solid. And it was torn. And when it's all bolted in, you can really move it a lot. It actually gets stronger when you release it because it's harder to bend with your fingers than if you had the piece of metal bolted to it. But it was very oily. It's just it's oil saturated, but I'm trying to find the tear in it. Mm. Ultimately, when you have it right there. Mm. It looks like a tiny tear, but it's definitely, yeah, that was it. Right there. That makes a difference. This is because there's many layers here, and as soon as you rip the first two, now you're working on the other one, so it tends to flex more. So when you have it under load, that's when you start really feeling the play, you know. And um, modern cars have like a universal joint that can't come out, and a lot of guys convert these cars to that, and it's you know it's an aftermarket shaft, then, and it costs a lot of money. But there was one advanced auto that had this left. You can't even get it anymore. You have to get it online. So at least I'm able to fix it, you know, locally as opposed to waiting for parts. And uh, 
I went back to the exhaust guy because this is what I'm going to do. This is the Y pipe. Okay. Got the flange. I got him to uh, expand this piece here and I expanded it there. And ultimately, I was trying to touch this weld up and I don't know. This pipe is so weak right here. I. I really don't know what to do with it. They had a bunch of holes in that. I welded that and I welded a couple of spots there. But ultimately, I'm going to bolt it up to the car and this is going to flip. Oop. Just to show you how it fits. But that's going to go on and it's going to take the place and then I'm going to weld around. So, depending where it sits in the car, it may be higher or lower. Um, I cut off a piece right here. This was where it was rotted, there was nothing here. I just cut it there because I had to give it some extra length, you know, so that will be the Y pipe. And then basically, I'm not sure what I'm doing. I cut it short, but this is, this is a two and a quarter inch pipe here, which is normal. And this goes down to a two inch pipe. And then it goes back up to two and a quarter, your original one. Your whole exhaust system is pretty much right there. You know, all this stuff. It's a little different setup than what I'm used to, but I had this guy made this now. This is a ball and socket joint so the original exhaust god forbid if it should ever rot out again or whatever you can just change the, no the normal this is what they call from the cat back the catalytic converter would have been here so he gave me a 30 degree pipe and a 20 degree pipe he said 20 degree is what they used to have here in place of where the catalytic converter was and it made hard it made it hard for people to remove their catalytic converter then and this is a 30 degree pipe because i don't know what what angle they really have and I got this longer so I can cut it here and, and play with it. But ultimately, I got to get the Y pipe up and finished first before I can start adding things. Um, so, yeah, oh, I painted the, the manifolds cast iron color. So they actually look like they're brand new. The paint will probably burn off, but you know, oh well. It's just, at least I like to do that. Anywho, um, yeah, so this pipe is basically so thin, it had so many holes in it. And when I was trying to touch up the welds, it was just breaking. So I might just cut it and put a new pipe there. Or probably probably the pipe that I got will work up to there. So I'll probably just cut that. Because you can't see, you can't weld up here in the car. So I'll, I'll weld this, I'll tack this in place. And probably just cut this off. And then I'll, I'll, I'll put a piece of pipe there. I'll line it up and then I'll tack, weld it from the bottom. And then once it's on, I will weld it all the way around. Because this is not so bad. It's really just this pipe right here because it looks like they expanded it because this is two inch and this is two inch and this is two and a quarter and this is back to two inch over here so it, it's just a mishmash of all different stuff that they've done over the years to the car I figured I'd just keep you up to date with the uh, the car this you know the electrical wise haven't got to it I started late today because I had other things I had to do I had to go to the exhaust place and your, your shaft gave me a lot of trouble so in the end um, uh, this is still a part. This is the neutral safety switch. It's mounted all the way on the bottom of the column. Uh, you can't really see much. The ignition switch went right here. I, I, I can't find it now, but anyway, this is the new stuff that I got. This is the ignition switch. And thank God this is the $30 switch and not ex anything expensive. I, I kind of had a feeling. That's why I told you even that thing, if you read carefully, I said I didn't... I really don't believe it. It's a big, it's some kind of two hundred dollar switch or hundred dollar switch. This is the neutral safety switch, and ultimately, what they did here is this switch went bad. You know, this this switch, this switch went bad. It hasn't because it fits other cars. They put extra connectors because it means something else for a different car. So you just don't you, you know yours only use these two and these two right here and right here. And even then, your car is not going to really use these. It's really not a neutral safety switch. They call it a neutral safety switch because it, it kind of is, but it really just controls where the reverse is. So when you, there's something inside the column, when, when this hits reverse, it turns on the reverse uh, light. So when I go into the trunk, try to make it quick. Uh, where did I put your keys? Let me say film and get a key. I put them in the keys this morning. I put them in the, in the thing this morning because I wanted to check something. Anyway. Okay. So the key was in the ignition. Let me take it out and uh, open the trunk. I'll show you what I mean. So basically the wire 
that goes to that switch for the reverse lights because you have no reverse lights and maybe one light that's out here but they all work it's there's more than one light for everything so you can see I have my test light here I was testing things and this green wire see how this green wire has a red wire to it okay the original green wire which is inside here which is right this guy yeah, right here this guy this this green one I'm holding my phone wrong so this green wire here you can tell it's the same color as this green wire right here okay somebody attached a red wire so I'm looking this is the red wire and there's a black wire here too I'm not quite sure what that is yet but they kind of wrapped it along this and then it kind of skews over here and the black wire probably just the ground this one goes down there and it's painted black so I didn't notice it at first but you can see the little touch of red over there but I'm like following this red I'm like it's got to be you know they usually run it and they run it along here so I'm looking here and boom red wire I'm like what the hell is this for and then these two others so I guess a former alarm but this doesn't make any sense there's a blue wire here I'm not sure where those are going I'm sure they're dead but I don't know where this reverse one, this red one was going, but it was directly cut off the reverse lights. So I don't know if it's something where, you know, some guys used to, you know, put a stupid switch in for their reverse lights and drive straight with their reverse lights on. It was a stupid trend, you know, 20 years ago or so. Now, that being said, the switch was bad, you know. It doesn't work. Couldn't get it to work. So I don't know if it's something, and maybe they had a switch just to actually let people know they were going in reverse and they had to remember to hit it every time but they couldn't figure this out so they just wired something apparently which was stupid but um it's going to work now because i'm going to hook that wire back up forget about the red wire it'll just be tied up and um like i said i just tugged on some of these um these these connections here somebody crimped all these see look i i pulled on this and it just pulled right out there's another one see look that one had pulled right on me as well so like this this is a Somebody does not understand how to how to crimp these properly. So I'm going to redo them all because If it's not just those two, it, it's a couple of others. So if you didn't see the light work, it was probably just one or the other So that's with that and I got a I got a um, Washer pump as well as Your husband wanted me to put in the washer pump and because you see there's no manifolds in there and there's no steering shaft uh, I also took out the starter. I went to AutoZone and I had it warranted because I told them, listen, the exhaust was pouring on it and I don't want to, I don't want it to die prematurely anyway. And even though it was working and it totally, you know, worked from the start, I just said, you know what? I'll just tell the guy it was overheated and even if it wasn't. So I got it right here. They warranted it for me. This is the pump. And that way, just in case we kick, kick, kill everything. But that, that, there's a, there's a purple wire that goes to the starter that, that cranks it. That's that's where your key is connected to when you when you turn it. It's uh, pretty much this guy right here. And it don't look purple anymore, but it's purple. And uh, that goes right to the ignition switch. Right to these two harness plugs go into the switch, okay? And that's the purple wire right there, this guy. That is the purple wire that goes right to it. There's nothing in between, nobody even, because sometimes people put an alarm in these cars and they have to cut that wire and then you also have another set of problems. It's not been that way. So it's, it's pretty intact. Sometimes you'll see these plugs are burnt. So somebody changes the, the, um, the, the switch, but it, the switch is new, but the plug is still black and it's not making a good connection because something overheated, you know? It's not the case here. It just needed a fucking ignition switch as far as I'm concerned. So, and so like basically, so as much as I thought the guy was trying to help you, now that I look at it, so he either never looked or he completely lied and said it was a $200 switch. It's $30. He could have said it was $60 and got you that way, but he should have changed it, you know? Uh, it's pretty pretty obvious it was it because if he changed it and it still happened, then he can blame the starter I put in, you know. 
or something, you know, or the wiring, but it's still only one wire that goes directly to the starter there. So even if I had to cut the wire and put a brand new wire going all through there, that would be the, like the, the next step, you know. But, um, you know, because the only other connection that there is is the main engine harness, which is like under there. That plug-in all the way down there, it's very secluded from everything else. It's usually not too much of a problem. Nobody ever really unbolts it, takes it out. But the purple wire, you can probably see a pur yeah, look, purple wire right there. You'd run a new, if it's if it's a bad connection from the inside, you have to do it from the inside, which is a pain. And then you could, you could do it right from here as well, but I doubt anything is really wrong from here to there. It's it's really, as soon as I played with the switch and I got the column down, the car, the car cranked. So this, this is... It's, it's, it's a very physical electrical switch. So you, normally electrical switches don't have this on and off problem, but because it's, it's basically, when you turn the key, you pull this rod right here. The rod has a thing sticking up, and that thing that sticks up goes right inside the hole right there, and it moves it. So, like if I stick my screwdriver in the hole here, you can hear it. It's hard with one hand. I'm having a hard time pushing it. This is a new switch. So, rather than sticking a screwdriver in there, you'll have to trust me. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. This this thing might be... Uh, this thing might be something that you pull out. Yeah, I can feel it. So, yeah. That's like... So it doesn't get messed up in the uh, shipping and whatnot. But we're not going to mess it up. So, ultimately... You know... Boom, you know, every click with the key, and then start, and it springs back. That's all it is, you know? So it's very possible there's just some kind of kooky connection in there that it was making, because it's both springs and everything in there. So it's it's old. That's really what it is. So, because it's one of those things, it's either going to work or it's not going to work, usually. But... Apparently, in your case, it was working sometimes and not other times. But most of the time, they actually just burn. They burn up. They, they, they kind of smoke, and then they're finished. You know, they smoke for like three, four seconds, and then that's it. But I was trying to show you the old switch, but I don't know what the fuck I did with it. Anyway, it's been a long day working on this, so let me get back to work, and uh, that's basically it. All right? Last video of the day. It's a bunch of O-rings. I put a couple of O-rings right here. There's a pressure seal in there, so I really don't rebuild these things, so I've never changed that one. I've changed the bottom one, but it's definitely leaking and nothing crazy, but it eventually got all that, that, that rubber bushing on that I put in here wet. So now the shaft is going to go back in. I got the steering box loosened. I got to bolt it all back, but I just wanted to tell you that I was doing something for that, you know, for that leak. Just put a couple of O-rings. It may help it, like, at least spread out the, the leak, you know, to go further away. Or, um, it may slow it down a little bit. There's not a ton of pressure, but it is a pressure seal. And it's not leaking horribly. So hopefully that, you know, helps a little tiny bit. I really don't know, though. But, uh, ultimately it has leaks, you know. So, um, and it had a ton of play in it, which I adjusted, which I don't know if it's going to like it, you know. I don't know that once something wears or whatever it happens, if you start playing with the adjustment, it may get tighter, but it may also, you know, get finished off and not, you know, not work as good. Ultimately, I don't really adjust these things. I just usually just change the whole box. But I know you're going through other stuff, but that should significantly tighten up a lot of stuff between the two of them, at least for now, until um, a later date. And you just wait. Wait and see. You, you know, you don't have to change anything. If, the, if you have power steering and it doesn't leak, then don't worry about it. Okay, shaft and steering box is in. But just to let you know, this is the temperature sending unit that makes your temperature gauge work. And this is the oil pressure sending unit. It's broken off the thing here. This is not hooked up, and this is not hooked up. And these right here, these wires that are cut in this harness, it's probably that. So if you want your gauges to work, you, you know, if you don't have your gauges working, which is what you've been doing, you are driving blind and don't know what your temperature is or your oil pressure. That being said, look at that oil filter. I have the, you know, since I have the manifold off, I'm like, oh my God, look at that. It looks like you haven't changed the oil in five years. So I'm going to change your oil, whether you like it or not. And uh, <laughs> that's, that's like ridiculous. 
to be honest. I can't believe you haven't changed the oil because that is a very, very old oil filter. Very old. Manifold's in, pump is back on, steering shaft in. I just got to put the plugs in on this side. But what makes anybody think that this is okay? This could literally go on fire, especially with all the exhaust leaks you have. I can imagine if it was on the other side. How do you just have a... It's not even a rag. It's a, it's a paper napkin for a oil, an oil fucking uh, fill, uh, fill plug. I'll get the right one. So I'm ready to bolt up this Y pipe so I can bolt it up and then weld it in the right place over here. I decided to cut it about here because I was thinking that, okay, if one of these pipes can, if I can expand it and make it fit inside to some degree, if I, you know, go through this weak metal and weld the new metal, it may not be so bad. And then you still tack it on the outside, you know. The thing is, once I cut it here, you know, forget that was, you know, this long. I take a look, okay, I got to show you this, this is just, boy oh boy, I could never have guessed this, see the pipe that's there, it's cut off there, that's this pipe, okay, and you can tell it ends right there, and they have this guy teed down to here, but you see what's going on here, this is a, this is a two inch pipe, and there's maybe one third of the pipe available, there's a big lip here that was welded first. They just welded on top. They didn't clean up this hole to make it a full two inches. This one here is impeding this, and this pipe that was bigger is impeding this. This is crazy. I've never seen that. I mean, that's the size of a quarter to give you a, uh, to give you a reference from a two inch pipe, two inch diameter. It goes, the ins, you know, the inside diameter is a little bit smaller because of that. I mean, a tiny bit. But I don't think I could fit a quarter in there. I don't think I have a quarter on me to, to check it. Or do I? That's a quarter. Right. Yes, sir. Do you have any spare stakes around, laying around, like stakes, like to put in, like in the ground? I mean, I could give you a piece of wood to... Um, Anyway, I think you, you, you get the gist of what I was saying. It's actually closer to a, a, a half dollar, but that's small. I got to grind that out. I can't even, I can't even entertain this. That, that's, in, that's insanity. That's such a small hole. That, that has to be such restrictive exhaust. It's not even funny where this one is wide open. And no wonder why you had a bunch of foul plugs on this side of the engine. It, it can't breathe. It, it's bad enough that it's at this angle because it should... It, 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 you know, it should kind of turn and then go together. You know, they should both tee into each other. This is very restrictive. Just at a 90 degree angle. But then it's totally cut off on top of that. It's insanity. Never seen anything like that in my life. Such a poor job. Crazy. Real quick, I just want to make a video. I know you were concerned about rust, and this was going to be something I was going to reuse, but the original, the studs that I put in, they're not perfectly aligned with this. The aftermarket one is very thick, and it has oval holes to make up for little imperfections. You know, so being that that was kind of, you know, it's not great, you know, but it was kind of doable, but my studs don't line up, so it, that, that's the nature of the beast when it comes to this. Now, this thing here is the flare that it was on. I cut it off, and I put the other one on the other side, and I'm going to use the other piece I have for the other side. That being said, you know, you see this flare after close inspection, it's contacting on a very, very narrow point. There's, there's not much use in this, so that's why I'm going to change that end. And I basically made a different, I'm making my own Y pipe here. So ultimately, that's how it's going to be roughly, and then I'm going to weld everything. I got to get the other flange at the store now, and uh, I got to test fit it, tack weld it in place, and then I can weld it fully on the ground and, uh, and get going. That's a hell of a job. Not to mention, that's a proper way to do the, the thing. This guy had like a 90 degree pipe going straight into the thing. Not to mention it was all, you know, where is it?
was here a minute ago. Hang on. That's your old ignition switch, by the way. Ah. Yeah, so this is the pipe. They had it going directly down 90 degrees, which is not right. You want a gradual introduction into the pipe, you know, but just to get a closer look here. I mean, this is abhorrent. This is like, you, you, you can't give this to a customer. There's nothing there. There's no hole there. There's no amount of grinding I'm going to do that is ever going to make this right. So I'm trying to make it right. And this is just part of the pipe, like I said. And uh, it, it's going to be right. At least it's going to be right. It's not going to be cheap. This was unfortunate. As you can see, that's silver paint everywhere. Well, I try to get the paint out of my stash and it dropped and it got punctured and it started spraying everywhere so it got a nice big thick coat but that's all it's going to get <laughs> that was my last can and I made a mess okay this is the small pipe that tees in that's the other side that's the tee I just said said about talked about this is the original, you know, style flange. And then all the way down. And that band clamp, this kit came with this band clamp and it basically just holds the outside of the pipe. Normally they used to slide in, but what's good about that is that if you ever had to work on the back of the car, because if you look carefully, you see the muffler actually goes across the rear end, behind the rear end. It used to be right here because it was some kind of, you know, go fast exhaust system somebody tried to put in. But it exits out the same side, it just uh, comes up on this side and comes around. And that is uh, the, where the original muffler went. And it allows you, this band clamp, to actually remove it if you needed to do any work, like if you had to remove the rear end or whatever. You know, the gas tank's not really in the way, but like anything you really had to remove to get out of the way, the, ex the exhaust is in the way for a lot of things. So, um, on these cars so it actually makes it removable which is a good thing so it's fully serviceable this Y pipe is removable everything's removable that's the problem with when you weld everything in you it's really not serviceable anymore you have to cut it and then re-weld it and everything changes a little bit if you keep doing that so I'm I'm pretty happy like welds I'm not so happy about but function is more important Now that the exhaust is quiet, you can hear that noise in the engine. It doesn't sound so great. It's kind of random. It kind of goes away. I don't think it's the crankshaft fully. Uh, I might just take a quick look at that, but now that it's running on all eight cylinders because we changed the spark plugs, it's running really nice. I mean, really nice. And this car is going to have to have power. You also had this cable disconnected from the carburetor, which will um, prevent it from downshifting if you floor it. Not that you floor it, but even on partial, um, partial, like, you know, like half, half. Uh, you, know, you want to pass somebody on a highway, you, you might get it better there, depending how good the tranny is. But I tightened the torque converter. It was actually a hair loose, I mean, a hair, um, on two of the three bolts. But, I don't know if that's a front pulley, I don't think so, I really don't. But, I mean, you had this noise even when I did the starter that time, because that was the first time I really got to look under the hood. But, uh, Sometimes these kind of things could be louder now that it's running on all the cylinders, but it's it's running really nice. So I mean, you could put a wine glass on this motor. And then very rhythmic, nice uh, you get actually a water coming out of the tailpipe. That means a good combustion. So so far so good. All the lights work now. I have all this taped up here, much better. And out of the way. I think I have something to fix it because if we came off the tow truck, this thing was just dangling. You know, that plastic thing was out, so I don't know if it's just too skinny of a screw, which could very well be it. 
I could probably pick up the correct license plate screws. And I, I, you know, between changing that thing on the steering, I tightened up the box a little bit. It's kind of, it does feel funny to me, this the steering, but the girl is in the, um, what happened? I thought I left the jack stand underneath the car. Alright. I just must be slipping on the rocks. Anyway, I can only go back and forth. She's blocking. It's Mother's Day. I don't want to bug them. But that's about it. You know, and this is the, uh, I had to buy this. This is because you don't have one in the car. This is called a breather. Okay. And I had to put a grommet. And these are hot rod, you know, valve covers. You can see they're all rusty now, but they were chrome. So when you have the chrome valve covers, you gotta get these chrome accessories. See, the factory ones are not gonna work, you know? So, like I said, that, that doesn't sound so good, that, that noise. Um, but uh, it would be nice if you knew what the oil pressure was of the engine. That's why none of your gauges work. They're, they're kind of up, but they're, that's just haphazard. You know, that's just, the last time the gauges worked, that's where they were at, and they kind of stay like that until you reset them. And, you know, there's no, yeah. That's not your temperature. That's a, that's not your oil pressure because it's not hooked up. Definitely not hooked up. So, but I'm pretty much all done now. I'm just showing you as I test drive it. You know, I mean the car pulls a little bit to the right, but nothing crazy. It's definitely tighter the steering. You know, you got to pretty much hold it straight to go straight. But. uh I hooked up that cable for the transmission, but when I floor it, it's a good amount of, uh, it runs great, but it's a good amount of blue smoke, and, and it did smoke on me when I was working, you know, when I was running it initially. Um, so, I think it's going good. I'm going 55 right now. Uh, I don't hear the, the knocking noise as much, but you do hear it going up to 30 miles an hour, and there was one other time that I, had a knocking noise that sounded like an engine knock, but it was in the transmission, in the torque converter of the transmission. So I don't know. Um, that's what it sounded like, to be honest. But because uh, if you have a knock in the engine, it's supposed to get louder as you rev it by laws of physics. Because something that is rotating, you know, once it's a certain weight, when you rev it, it gets heavier. So it makes more noise. And I think this engine would have gone a long time ago because I heard this noise before. Uh, it was just a little hard to hear with the exhaust. But right now it's really quiet. I got the windows open and, you know, I can hear for the most part with no problem. Um, but, the, you know, one of the plugs that were fouled was the, um, uh, what do you call it? was the one that was probably burning the oil, you know, because it was cluttered with, and I can show it to you, uh, uh, it was cluttered with a whole bunch of um, carbon uh, burnt up oil all over the spark plug. So, see, like right now, it's like a little bit tight to the left, and then it moves better, you know? Like I said, there's only so much you can adjust the steering box before you start having other issues with it and ultimately I mean the power steering is working I know it's a little funny this thing but it, it feels a lot tighter so I mean I let go of the wheel you know it mostly drives straight for what it is but it's it's a little funny to the left to the right I don't know if it was like that before but sometimes when you start playing with the adjustments you gotta you, you sacrifice other things you know so, but I don't know if you can hear the noise on the on the uh, video, but it's still making that noise. But it's the engine doesn't miss, you know. And I think the only reason why it was missing was it eventually got fouled out. And sometimes it's good to floor it and get it cleaned out every so often, you know, because um, you know burning oil is, just, is always you know could be a problem, you know. So. Should have turned down a different street. Um, anyway, running pretty good. I get a little bit of tightness in the center 
it could be the way I adjusted it, and you know, it could be like the point of no return. If you make it looser, it's going to be loose. And if you make it tighter, it's almost a little bit too tight. You know, it's eventually you need a steering box, but it's you know a minor leak coming from the top part. There's there's not really a leak on the bottom, so I guess we can leave it. You know, I don't know. If, maybe I'll play with it one last time to see if I can get it to work any better, but. It really, it's really not that bad, you know? But like all your hoses are old, the pump is old, but it's working. Um, a lot of the parts on this engine, this engine is from at least 1978. I'm gonna say between 74 and 78. That's the year of this engine. I just know because of the type of carburetor that it has, among other things. But it's running fairly well. I mean, I'm using, like, literally, other than the time that I floored it in the, in the photo when I was looking in the rearview mirror for the blue smoke, because uh, blue smoke is oil, just to let you know. Uh, it was, uh, I'm only using, like, one inch of the gas pedal. as tons of acceleration, you know. It's very, very nice on acceleration. And the transmission is actually shifting just nice as well, you know. So... Now, some of this blue smoke might be a little bit, you know, like the cylinder could be so full of sludge that it's taking time to really clean it out. So, it's possible some of this blue smoke is residual stuff that just takes time to burn it out of the cylinder. But it seems like an oil burner, this car. Uh, a lot of them, you know, have bad valve, valve stem seals when they reach this old, you know. And, you know, that requires doing a valve job and pulling the heads off. But, uh, you know, you can just change the seals maybe on the car. Uh, runs fairly well. But with, with this noise, without really knowing what this noise is, I don't know how much money you should put into the engine. You know, but the steering box, I would just say deal with it for now. But it, it definitely feels better than it was. Like I said, there's only so much you can adjust it. So I don't know how long it's going to last, per se. So we'll see. You know, uh, but otherwise, um, it, it is a world of difference on this car, and it's so nice and quiet too. On top of everything, so that really, that really makes a difference as far as driving experience goes. Just decided to check something else. So I took over, took off this to reveal the thing that I changed, and already the steering box is starting to drip there. It was leaking there before, but it was a minor leak, you know. But when I go back and forth like this, I hear a little clunk. And I'm like, what is that? You know, but I'm, I've went through this with adjusting it. You see, as soon as you adjust it, that, try to find, my, that bar right there, that's connected to the steering box. See how it moves ever so slightly? I mean, I couldn't adjust it anymore, but I realized over here on this side, and I had this whole shaft out on the bench. I didn't notice it on the bench, you know, because it usually... I mean, this car has to have a lot more miles than what we know, but this is moving sideways. So this is probably why you have that little bindage in the middle, but also the bottom of the steering column. There's a bearing right inside here where my finger is. Let me put the light on. Oops. There's a little bearing that I'm not even sure if you can replace it. There's a tiny bit of play there, but most of it's right here. I'm not sure about what the fix is for this, but I mean, it's drivable. I mean, this is, like I said, I, I think inherently that stuff goes bad when the whole thing collectively starts wearing. So, this was a lot of play before, and it's a lot less. There's really no play right now as far as the steering box is concerned. But you do have something here. That's why I think it feels better, you know. But ultimately, you know, a box is in your future, but I, I don't know what the fix is for this, you know, to be honest. Uh, I know some people put aftermarket stuff in here and they get, you know, they get three hundreds of dollars, but I don't know if there's a quick fix for this. But it's a simple thing, I know that, and it usually, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I have a fix for that. You know, I have to research it, but... Uh, I don't know if that's really your complaint, but it is, you know, kind of the thing to feel in the middle. But it, it just keep turning, you know. It's it's just binding a little bit, you know. But uh, 
I can research it now and see if there's anything I can do real quick to, to try to alleviate some of that. Um, not quite sure yet. So I want to make a quick video. This is your oil filter. This is a special tool that opens the oil filter. It cuts it open and then there's a cartridge filter inside it. Okay, and this is the paper that was around. I cut all the paper off and I laid it all out. And if you look with the light, this is the outside part. Now, I see a little bit of metal. You know, I, I noticed this noise in your engine, you know, when I did the starter even. It was kind of loud. And the thing is, though, you rev the engine like to 3,000 RPM, the noise goes away. So it makes me feel like it's a centrifugal noise versus a, um, uh, you know, an engine noise. Because when the engine has a noise that's in the lower half of the engine, it will get louder when you rev it. It actually, under physics laws, it gets heavier so it makes more noise. If the noise gets quieter, then it's not the engine. And it's something rotating. It could be the harmonic balancer, which is on the front of the engine. It could be the flywheel, which is on the back of the engine, or it can be the torque converter. And there's only and sometimes the you know the the harmonic balancer you see it wobbling around. It's very easy to tell. And the flywheel, it's it's kind of you, you hear it as soon as you start cranking it. Usually, I mean it looks very dirty because I think it's a long time since you did an oil change because that thing looks so old. But I'm not seeing like this ton of metal, which is what you'd see, a whole bunch of glitter you'd see in the light. You know, there's crusty stuff, you know. The back end of the filter, obviously, is the cleaner part. But there's only so much you can filter. The small, small dirt is something else. That's why dirt has no, no size limit. That's why it's important to change your oil and the filter. So... I mean, honestly, the assessment of that engine, other than the oil burning, which are valve stem seals, it's basically you see smoke on startup, and when you're when you're driving, I think I showed you in the video how I was coasting it at one speed, and then I floored it to, like to get passing gear, and whoosh, you see a puff of blue smoke at the tailpipe. That's actually fixable to some degree. It could be even done on the car, but ultimately everybody waits until the car needs a valve job, you know, which it doesn't sound like it needs one. It's running actually very good, but the good news is it kind of sounds like either a flywheel or a, um, or a torque converter noise, most likely a torque converter noise, which is in the transmission, which the torque converter, the transmission looks like it's been rebuilt, uh, and the torque converter looks very clean. It looks like it was changed as well, but, you know... Somebody has to rebuild those things. It's not usually a, um, you know, a big machining process because it's old. You know, these are still 40-year-old parts that people are rebuilding. And just like alternators and starters, they're, they're subject to being rebuilt too many times. And basically the core is not good. But because they're cutting costs, they're trying to, you know, push the, the one last one through. So I don't like the way it sounds. But ultimately, I guess I'd have to disconnect the torque converter slide it back and then start the engine and see if I still hear this noise because it's very very odd the, the noise it sounds just like a rod knock and there's only one time I've ever almost mistaken an engine knock for a for an engine as opposed to a transmission you know and uh, yeah it was news to me the, the transmission a torque converter but it was the same transmission that was making that kind of noise so basically I think your engine is not so bad, you know. I think it's actually, you know, sound because it runs too good. And like I said, because of age, and I know that engine is a 1978 engine, maybe a 77. Uh, pretty sure it's a 78 engine. Um, that the uh, the valve stem seals are just bad, and it's a it's a decent sized job to change it, but it's not, you know, the end of the world to change it. It'll help, but sometimes the valve guide is worn. Like the valve guide is like, let's say, my finger, and it's going up and down, and there's a seal around it that squeegees this valve and prevents oil from dripping into the combustion chamber. And if it doesn't squeegee anymore, 
it, it just dumps oil, you know, and you'll get that puff of smoke, you know, that's why you got to keep your oil level up and everything, but, but ultimately, I just, it, when you drive the car now, you're going to feel some power, you know, like it actually really moves, and, um, not only that, it, it, it runs very well and runs very steady. And a motor with a knock usually doesn't sound that good. And it doesn't, you know, like, I, the knock sounds just as loud as it was in December. And you grind, that, that's how big of a knock it is. It, it's, it was so loud, I was able to hear it through the exhaust. And now you can really hear it because of the, um, you know, the ex quiet exhaust system. So, I think... Uh, you're not done yet with that engine. I think it's pretty good, you know, believe it or not. Uh, and, and taking something apart like the filter definitely helps clinch your, your um, you know, my, my particular uh, theories. So, just wanted to let you know about that, and uh, that's about it, all right? Hopefully, uh, we sort out everything else with the car, with the steering and whatnot in the future, in the near future, and... Uh, get to fixing other things in that car because it's it's I don't think it's as much as a throwaway car anymore now that I really see how well it could run